Oh, it's disgusting. You can't even buy a newspaper around here without being assaulted by all these smutty magazines. Well, don't look. How can you help but look? They're all over the place. That's the price you pay for living in a free country. That's not freedom. That's moral anarchy. You want censorship? No. Well, then you have to learn to live with a little smut. Whatever happened to the good old days and plain brown wrappers? Yeah, when you used to fight off your brothers for the National Geographic. I thought I was the only girl who did that. No, we all did that. Do you remember the issue on the pygmies? April 1959. No, that was the wild men of Borneo. That's right, I had to look up Borneo on the map. That's how I got interested in being a travel agent. You're kidding. Is no. that true? Yeah. Would I lie to you? Yes, you would. You have on several occasions. Come on, Chip, just hold still. Your dad's gonna be here any minute. I just wanna cut off these threads. Why does the collar have to be so stiff? Because it's that kind of wedding. <laughs> Can I take it off later? No. You are to remain intact. You are my son, and I want you making a perfect impression. I'm gonna be Claire's son, too, now. Stepson. Check us out, Mom. Hey, Chip, you look great. <laughs> like Fred Astaire on a little TV set. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, come on, turn. Turn. Stop. Good. Okay, Emma, turn. Turn. Stop. You two look gorgeous. Okay, now go put on your car clothes. <laughs> hey, they get right up in their car clothes? Well, their dresses will get wrinkled. And it's okay if I get wrinkled? I can't count on anyone putting you back together. Now, the way you're going to sit, you're not going to get wrinkled, so sit. Oh, not like that, Chip. Back straight, knees together, feet together, hands folded, head up. I can't breathe. Good. Charles is here. Okay, Chip, take off your jacket. You can loosen your tie and unbutton the collar. Thanks, Mom. But tell your dad to put your tie back on when you get there. When they asked for the ring, I could say I lost it. No, Chip. Tell your dad I'll be down in a minute. All the kids look adorable. Man brings home some other woman and gets his kids another mother. Maybe someday you'll do the same thing and get your kids another father. We have too much power. Okay, are we all set? Do we have everything? I don't have the ring. It's in Connecticut, Chip. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. Come on, head on out to the car. Because I wouldn't want anything to happen to that ring. Right. <laughs> See you, Mom. Bye. Oh, Charles, make sure you fix his tie when you get there. Okay, I will. Don't let him play with the dog in his tuxedo. I won't. And, uh, congratulations, Charles. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. You, um, might take it as a compliment that I still believe very much in marriage. Thank you. Hope I'd do it better this time. I want that there, Charles. <laughs> uh, I wish you all the best. And Claire. Thanks. Uh, m may I, uh... Oh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Bye. Charles, congratulations. Thanks. You did that like a queen. Yeah, I feel like a queen. <laughs> queen of hearts. Off with her head. I can't believe that woman is wandering around Connecticut with my charge cards. <laughs> Here, Allie, console yourself. You, Allie Lowell, may have already won a trip to Dubrovnik. Couldn't have come at a better time. Do they really expect us to believe this phony, personalized junk mail? Well, it's better than the real personalized junk mail we get. You, Kate McArdle, oh, the phone company. Oh, no. What is it? This roll of film came back developed. Our last roll. Last roll of what? Me and Ted. Just when you thought it was safe to open the mail. <laughs> Oh, look, there he is necking with the statue of Alice in Wonderland in Central Park. Don't look at those. Give them to me. No, I want to. Why? Because they came and because I should. You're only aggravating yourself. You're right. I'm heading for a major downer. Welcome to the club. Allie, we live in the best city in the world. Let's get out in it and do something. Like what? Like spend money. Whose money? Well, let's treat ourselves to a fabulous dinner. Great. Let's go crazy. <laughs> I don't know how to 
go crazy. <laughs> just go as far as you know how, and then I'll just push you the rest of the way. <laughs> Did I tell you? Did I tell you that we'd find something fabulous? I'm going to put these over here so there will be no accidents. And with a minimum of preparation so you wouldn't be trapped in the kitchen? Get me something big. How about the garbage can? Great. Okay. Okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. You think that'll hold them? They don't look like they're going anywhere. Why don't we have some champagne? Before dinner? Yeah, I mean, we should drink a toast to the lobsters while they can still hear it. Don't point that thing at me. To Kate Lobster and Allie Lobster, <laughs> who are here to remind us that no matter how rotten things get for Kate and Allie, that they'll never be as bad as they are for uh, Kate Lobster and Allie Lobster. <laughs> it's very profound. To Kate and Allie Lobster. To Kate and Allie Lobster. Mm. You know what we need? Two men. Stop it, we're supposed to be having a good time. Okay, okay. I feel great, I've got champagne and lobsters and truffles and French bread and cake. I'm gonna celebrate, damn it, and so are you. Start celebrating. How? Well, we'll dress for dinner. Dress? Yes, and then when we come down, we'll be gorgeous and happy, just like movie stars. <laughs> okay. Ready. I didn't know we were going formal. Everything else I own went out with Ted. All these dresses are fraught with memories. Sweet, sad memories of the days. Formal's fine. Let's go. <laughs> Do you like this dress? It's beautiful. You want me to cut the tags? No, out? because I'll probably be taking it back. Why? Because I won't have any chance to wear it now. Why not? Because I bought this dress to go out with Tad on his birthday, and I'll never meet another man like him as long as I live. I might as well just face it. This is so ridiculous. Of course you will. No, it's true. I'm kidding myself. I'm just going to take up needlepoint. No one could ever accuse you of being on an even keel. <laughs> what about our party? Allie, I'm partied out. No, you're not. I'm just going to cut those tags off and we'll go sublimate. No, you're not. I'm returning it. I don't need it. What's need got to do with it? Do you know how many dresses I own? 23. Fascinating. Do you know how many dresses I need? Six. None. I do not have the life I keep shopping for. <laughs> Why do you keep shopping? Why do birds fly? Why do fish swim? Why bother? Because someday I might meet a man who would take me great places. And I'm gonna be ready, boy. Keep the faith and the dress. And I'm gonna cut off those two. No, you're not. Oh, Allie. come on. No. Let me just cut them off. No, Allie, no. If you only knew how stupid you look with those stupid tags flapping in the breeze like some demented moth or something. I want you to put your scissors down on the table right now. I mean it, Allie. Okay. But could you tuck them in or something? No, I like my tags, okay? And if I decide to keep the dress, and that's a big if, if I decide, then I get to cut off my own tags, all right? Okay, okay. Touchy. Oh, Allie, I used to be so sure of everything. I mean, I loved Max. We thought that would work. We lived like gypsies. He wanted to stay a gypsy. I wanted to be a wife and mother and dress like a gypsy. So then I told everybody I wanted to settle down. Ted comes along, offers me exactly that, and I run. We weren't talking about marriage. We were talking about those tags. You look beautiful. You want the dress. I wanted to buy the dress for Ted. Well, I want you to buy the dress for you. What do you want? I really don't know what I want. I wanted to get married, but I don't really want to be married. I want a baby, but I honestly don't want to raise another child. I want to fall in love, but I really don't think I'm up to the compromises that I'd have to make. I want a man, but I really don't know of any man that I want. 
You have just described the dilemma that affects most women between the ages of puberty and senility. <laughs> Let's eat. You mean the lobsters? That was the plan. I was just checking. Hi, guys. How can you tell a male lobster from a female lobster? I can't. They can. Good. Ready or not, here we come. No, no, wait, no. We're executioners. We should offer them a last meal or something. Or a little lobster priest. Okay, okay. Get the biggest pot we have. Okay. How about this one? That's the biggest pot we have in the house? Why? This won't work? Well, we'll have to chop them up first. Oh, God. <laughs> Wait. What? Follow me. Okay. What? What are we doing? Somewhere down here is a lobster pot. You have a lobster pot? It was a wedding present. I never got to use it. Ah, I bet you it's in this box marked useless. Good guess. <laughs> Mostly wedding presents. You actually kept a box labeled useless? Memories, Kate. Bad memories, Al. Ah, but they're all mine. Wait a minute. I gave you this lava lamp. <laughs> you insulted? A little credit, please. <laughs> you see? I remember this. You had all your wedding presents laid out at your parents' home. Strictly Emily Post? Oh, it was a stunning wedding. I know. You were so beautiful, Allie. Your hair was so high. I know, I was taller than Charles. You were taller than everybody at the wedding. You know that moment right before you walked down the aisle? No, we didn't have an aisle in the meadow. Oh, right. You know that moment when you and Max grabbed hands and then you ran through the flowers to where the sitar player was? <laughs> and you looked at this man that was about to be your husband in about 10 minutes and you thought, who is this guy? And then your whole future flashed before you, the house, the kids, the dead pets. <laughs> All I remember is giggling hysterically at the buttons on my sleeve and craving chocolate. <laughs> Was I, I looked at Charles and I thought, I can't say I do. I'll just run away. But my father had a hold of my arm. And I thought, if this marriage lasts, either Charles will bury me or I'll bury him. Someday, we both will be dead. <laughs> You're kidding. But just think, at this very moment, Claire is thinking the same thing. <laughs> Allie. What are these? Letters. Not love letters. Yeah, love letters. Not Charles's love letters. Yeah, Charles's love letters. Oh, where's the rest of them? Well, that's it. <laughs> you only saved two? I only got two. You want to read them? Yeah. <laughs> My dear Allie, I don't have much time between bio and psych, but I wanted to tell you how happy you have made me. I appreciate your giving up your last year of college to be with me at med school, but as you say, it's no more than your duty. You said that? I meant that. I will strive to be worthy of your trust and faith and, of course, your love. Dear Allie, please believe me when I say, oh, here's the prof. Gotta sign off. Regards, Charles. <laughs> Regards, let's do the lobsters. Oh, no, no, read the other one. Okay. Dear, that's dear, isn't it? Yeah, dear Ellie. Hard to read the handwriting on this one. Oh, well, that was after he became a doctor. <laughs> dear Ellie, this is to say how sorry I am for the, for the things that I said. What is that? For the things that I said last night. Oh, we had a fight. Oh. You must understand my... What's that? Looks like a Y. My Yoast? What Yoast? <laughs> oh, no, my post. What post? Position. You must understand my position. Oh, this is wonderful. What? I can no longer read Charles's handwriting. Wow. <laughs> 
I don't know why I saved these things anyway. Well, why don't you just throw them in here with the lobsters? The water's boiling. You probably leave a bitter aftertaste. <laughs> Are you gonna keep them? For now. You think that's healthy? Hey, you keep your tags, I'll keep my letters. Okay, drop them in. What? No way. You put in yours, I'll put in mine. Okay. <laughs> I suppose lobsters have really small brains, right? Oh, infinitesimal. Very low pain center then, right? Hardly any. They'll never know what hit them? Never know. Okay. Wait a minute. Ah. Well, why don't you have hors first? Good idea. What do you want? Cake. Fine. And drinks. <laughs> no need to rush into this thing. We can have the lobsters any time we want to. Right. Save the best. Or last. <laughs> you know, that's what I like about you, Kate. Your unwavering dedication to a life of moderation. Let's have candles. <laughs> Are we at midlife yet? No. Oh, good. I thought I was having my crisis. No, not yet. Well, that's good. See, there's something good. We're not having a midlife crisis yet. It's not really good, because if we're not having it now, we know it's coming. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe we won't have it at all. Maybe tomorrow we'll meet two wonderful men and live happily ever after. What if only one of us meets a wonderful man and lives happily ever after? <sighs> it is amazing how you can turn every happy thought into a sad thought. Okay, okay. Here's a happy thought. If one of us meets a wonderful man, then the other one gets to keep the apartment. Unless the other one wants to live in the apartment with the wonderful man. Let's stop talking about this right now, okay? okay. You light the candles, I'll dim the lights. What about the lobsters? We haven't had hors d'oeuvres and drinks. Okay, I'll light the candles. You know, Ellie, when I first married Max, I thought that sex was everything. It isn't? Of course not. Oh, good. Charles is still my one and only. Oh, please don't depress me again. Okay, okay. You thought sex was everything. Yeah, but now I see it for what it really is. What is it? Well, I can't just tell you. Why not? My mother did. She told me sex was something you had to do to keep a man. And if you happened to like it, then that was a bonus. <laughs> oh, poor thing. What did your mother say? Oh, my mother told me that sex was something that you should do well. Wow. <laughs> this isn't working, Allie. I can't stop talking about Ted. We weren't talking about Ted. We were talking about sex. Same thing. Wow. <laughs> you know that if sex was everything, I would have married him. Oh. Do you think it's us? What? I mean, do you think it's something that we did as individuals, or do you think it was just social pressure? What? You know, I mean, we're alone. Yeah. So do you blame yourself, or do you blame social pressures and unreasonable expectations? I blame Charles. <laughs> For everything? Short of nuclear holocaust. <laughs> I don't think that's the healthiest attitude. Ah, uh, but it gets me through the night. Did your mother really tell you that about sex? Yeah. And my father said no one was good enough for me. Ah, that tells me a lot. Thank you. A toast. To what? To us for having survived our parents' advice. I will drink to that. <laughs> you think they know what's coming? Do we? Do you like lobster? I used to. Me too. Well, we've got to eat them. What else are we going to do with them? I don't like lobsters anymore. But you were the one that told me to buy them. No, because it was an expensive treat. I can see it now. We're going to end up with a pair of pet lobsters. <laughs> we could take them back to the store. I don't think they're returnable. Unlike that dress. And if you don't let me cut those tags off, I'm going to rip them off. Why? What are you so mad about? We have no dinner, and I don't know what to do with these lobsters. 
We could set them free. It would be better than eating them. You don't like lobsters either? No. I don't think anybody likes lobsters. I think it's just social pressure like everything else. <laughs> Where could we set them free? The Hudson River. <laughs> there are no lobsters in the Hudson River. They'd be safer in boiling water. <laughs> Allie? What? We're not lobster people. What? I mean, we tried to have this fancy dinner with special stuff, and I mean, basically, we're meatloaf people. <laughs> yeah, I guess. No, really, we thought the lobsters were gonna make us happy. We couldn't even kill them. It's like we, it's like we went to Oz and found out that we preferred Kansas. What are you talking about? I like us, Allie. We're fun. Oh, yeah. We're so much fun. We throw ourselves a dinner party and can't even bring ourselves to serve an entree. I don't care. I'm full anyway. This was fine. I know, but it's the principle. You know what thing. life is? A fountain. <laughs> life is a pie. Oh. But life doesn't always give you the whole pie. Sometimes it just gives you a slice. Yeah? And the thing is to eat the slice you have with relish. Pie with relish. Are you pregnant? <laughs> the thing is to eat the one that you have at the moment and not worry about the rest of the pie. So, life is a pie. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Live for the moment. Right, because the past is the past, and the future is just the past that hasn't happened yet, but the present is the slice that's on your plate. And I like the slice that's on my plate right now. I prefer lemon meringue. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow we'll get a slice of pie with a man in it. Poor four and 20 blackbirds. <laughs> okay, do you think we bake our own pies, or do you think they're baked for us and handed to us? No, I think we bake some. I think some just fall out of the sky and hit us in the face. Right. <laughs> See, life is a pie. You know when bread gets moldy? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And it stinks? Uh-huh. I think maybe if you hold on to some old, useless piece of pie, it gets moldy, too. And you don't get a new piece? Right. So the thing is to throw away the old pie as soon as you can to make room for new pie. That's right. So let's do it. Out with the old pie, in with the new. You're keeping the dress. Hey, I need this dress. We're going places. How are the members of the wedding? Oh, the girls danced so much at the wedding. They're exhausted. They just fell right into bed. And Chip looked pretty tired, too. Yeah, he's upstairs brushing his teeth and then right into bed. You know something? Hmm? Today was a really good day. Yeah. Tomorrow could even be better. Yeah. And if it's not, why worry about it? Yeah. Just when you think there's no one around who's caring Along comes a friend who offers a hand in sharing Then things start looking fine Sometimes tears and sorrow are all the things you've got Just when you think you're all by yourself, you're not You can't even buy a newspaper around here without being assaulted by all these smutty magazines. Well, don't look. How can you help but look? They're all over the place. That's the price you pay for living in a free country. That's not freedom. That's moral anarchy. You want censorship? No. Well, then you have to learn to live with a little smut. 
Whatever happened to the good old days and plain brown wrappers? Yeah, when you used to fight off your brothers for the National Geographic. I thought I was the only girl who did that. No, we all did that. Do you remember the issue on the pygmies? April 1959. No, that was the wild men of Borneo. That's right, I had to look up Borneo on the map. That's how I got interested in being a travel agent. You are kidding. No. Is that true? Yeah. Would I lie to you? Yes, you would. You have on several occasions. Come on, Chip, just hold still. Your dad's gonna be here any minute. I just wanna cut off these threads. Why does the collar have to be so stiff? Because it's that kind of wedding. <laughs> Can I take it off later? No. You are to remain intact. You are my son, and I want you making a perfect impression. I'm gonna be Claire's son, too, now. Stepson. Check us out, Mom. Hey, Chip, you look great. <laughs> like Fred Astaire on a little TV set. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, come on, turn. Turn. Stop. Good. Okay, Emma, turn. Turn. Stop. You two look gorgeous. Okay, now go put on your car clothes. <laughs> hey, they get tied up in their car clothes? Well, their dresses will get wrinkled. And it's okay if I get wrinkled? I can't count on anyone putting you back together. Now, the way you're going to sit, you're not going to get wrinkled, so sit. Oh, not like that, Chip. Back straight, knees together, feet together, hands folded, head up. I can't breathe. Good. Charles is here. Okay, Chip, take off your jacket. You can loosen your tie and unbutton the collar. Thanks, Mom. But tell your dad to put your tie back on when you get there. When they asked for the ring, I could say I lost it. No, Chip. Tell your dad I'll be down in a minute. All the kids look adorable. Man brings home some other woman and gets his kids another mother. Maybe someday you'll do the same thing and get your kids another father. We have too much power. Okay, are we all set? Do we have everything? I don't have the ring. It's in Connecticut, Chip. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. Come on, head on out to the car. Because I wouldn't want anything to happen to that ring. Right. <laughs> See you, Mom. Bye. Oh, Charles, make sure you fix his tie when you get there. Okay, I will. Don't let him play with the dog in his tuxedo. I won't. And, uh, congratulations, Charles. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. You, um, might take it as a compliment that I still believe very much in marriage. Thank you. Hope I'd do it better this time. I want that there, Charles. <laughs> uh, I wish you all the best. And Claire. Thanks. Uh, m may I, uh... Oh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Charles, congratulations. Thanks. You did that like a queen. Yeah, I feel like a queen. <laughs> queen of hearts. Off with her head. I can't believe that woman is wandering around Connecticut with my charge cards. <laughs> Here, Allie, console yourself. You, Allie Lowell, may have already won a trip to Dubrovnik. Couldn't have come at a better time. Do they really expect us to believe this phony, personalized junk mail? Well, it's better than the real personalized junk mail we get. You, Kate McArdle, oh, the phone company. Oh, no. What is it? This roll of film came back developed. Our last roll. Last roll of what? Me and Ted. Just when you thought it was safe to open the mail. <laughs> Oh, look, there he is necking with the statue of Alice in Wonderland in Central Park. Don't look at those. Give them to me. No, I want to. Why? Because they came and because I should. You're only aggravating yourself. You're right. I'm heading for a major downer. Welcome to the club. Allie, we live in the best city in the world. Let's get out in it and do something. Like what? Like spend money. Whose money? Well, let's treat ourselves to a fabulous dinner. Great. Let's go crazy. <laughs> I don't know how to go crazy. <laughs> just go as far as you know how, and then I'll just push you the rest of the way. 
Did I tell you? Did I tell you that we'd find something fabulous? I'm going to put these over here so there will be no accidents. And with a minimum of preparation so you wouldn't be trapped in the kitchen? Get me something big. How about the garbage can? Great. Okay. Okay. On the count of three. One. Two. Three. You think that'll hold them? They don't look like they're going anywhere. Why don't we have some champagne? Before dinner? Yeah. I mean, we should drink a toast to the lobsters while they can still hear it. Don't point that thing at me. To Kate Lobster and Allie Lobster, <laughs> who are here to remind us that no matter how rotten things get for Kate and Allie, that they'll never be as bad as they are for uh, Kate Lobster and Allie Lobster. <laughs> that is very profound. To Kate and Allie Lobster. To Kate and Allie Lobster. Mm. You know what we need? Two men. Stop it! We're supposed to be having a good time. Okay. Okay. I feel great. I've got champagne and lobsters and truffles and French bread and cake. I'm gonna celebrate, damn it, and so are you. Start celebrating. How? Well, we'll dress for dinner. Dress? Yes, and then when we come down, we'll be gorgeous and happy, just like movie stars. <laughs> okay. Ready? I didn't know we were going formal. Everything else I own went out with Ted. All these dresses are fraught with memories.